we created a product that uh, combined uh, power distribution and control and took the next step which is to use your smartphone as the interface. The fuses are really not fuses. What we use are self-resetting programmable circuit breakers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens is you can actually uh, go to your smartphone and you can say for any of the circuits what you want the circuit to be fused at. So 5 amps, 10 amps, 15 amps, whatever it is. And that's what will happen on the unit. You know, if you exceed that, uh, that amount of power or you have a short circuit, the system will just shut the, shut the uh, circuit down. You'll get a notification on the phone. You'll just fix the problem, do a reset, and you're on down the road. You're going to want to locate the neutrino black box within two feet of the battery. It's, the terminal leads that come with it are two feet long. If you absolutely have to locate it farther than that distance, you need to use eight gauge wire and use a proper solder or um, good crimp connection to extend these wires. But you want to make sure and use eight gauge wire and keep it within a reasonable distance. So on this 1200 GS, the battery is here behind this panel on the bike and actually locate the neutrino right on top of that battery. You're able to put it under the seat here and you can see there's a small space on top of the ECU and underneath the, uh, the seat. You want to make sure that you, your seat is not contacting the neutrino at all. And then what the third location that is always open on these bikes. There's a cavity under there that is a great location to also put the neutrino. For my situation on this bike, I'm going to put the neutrino right on top of the battery here. You just want to make sure before you touch, you know, any electrical components on you know, a motorcycle, you just want to discharge any static electricity by touching a metal portion of the bike. So while the Neutrino Black Box is waterproof and dustproof and shockproof, your leads coming into the unit um, do need to be protected from water. And a, a simple way to do that is to use dielectric grease and coat those wires coming in so that there is no possibility of water causing a short circuit, which if that happens, all that will happen is the neutrino will tell you that there's a short circuit and that you'll need to correct it. Now I want to show you the app and how it controls the lights. So now I want to change the label of this circuit from circuit one to front lights. So I can just quickly label it accordingly and save it. So on this screen, I have a couple other features that I can set. Circuit memory, which all the circuits are set to when you turn off the key, the circuit will, when you turn it back on, the circuit will be in the off position. But if you set circuit memory to on, it will remember the setting you had when the neutrino was shut down. Here in the middle, you have the circuit breaker setting. If you select on that, you can set it 10 amps, 9.5 amps, all the way down to 2 amps or off, or all the way up to, on this circuit, the max is 12 amps. For this circuit, I'm going to choose 10 amps and just hit back and that's saved. The third thing I can set on this screen, on the lower portion of the screen here, is how I want the circuit to perform, whether it's on or off with the ignition switch or if it has a timer setting or, in, or there's a various other options here. So you can see the first setting, default setting, is ignition switch. Or you can set a timed delay that the circuit will stay on after the key is turned off. And you can set that up to four hours. That's useful for charging a cell phone when you're you know, at the campsite. You can set it for an hour so it'll charge your phone and then turn off without draining the battery of your bike completely. The final setting here is the voltage alarm setting. This is selectable. I'll show you elsewhere on the Neutrino, in the Neutrino Cockpit app. But right now it's set to 9.5 volts. So what that means is if this battery voltage drops to 9.5 volts, the circuit will automatically be turned off. So we're back at the home screen and we can see circuit one is now changed to front lights and I can 
tap on it and choose to turn it off and on. And as you can see, the associated LED on the circuit on the Neutrino is turning off and on. There are more settings that I can set, global settings for all the circuits here in the tool-shaped icon. You can set your um, altitude display, your miles per hour, your temperature, um, Fahrenheit or Celsius, and then your time to 12 hour or 24 hour. So another way to view your circuits is to go to the composite view by tapping on your battery voltage and you can see all of your circuits listed here, their current draw and the breaker setting for them, the circuit breaker setting. And then you have totals down below of what you're drawing and the maximum of the neutrino which is 60 amps or the maximum of what you've configured the neutrino below 60 amps. And so on the bottom left here you can you see alarm volts. If you, if you select that you can set your alarm voltage setting which that's useful in two ways. One that it'll monitor your battery and give you a warning on the Neutrino app that your battery has dropped to your selected voltage alarm and then any circuits that you have selected to be turned off by the voltage alarm they will turn off one volt below your set alarm voltage. So now you can see how to control a circuit in the cockpit app. So you can see when I turn the circuit off, the light turns off, turn the circuit on, the light turns on. If you want to set these lights to a dimmable setting, you can see you can turn the light on and vary the brightness brighter and dimmer directly from the cockpit app. So now if you want to install heated clothing, I'll show how simple and easy it is. Traditionally you have a harness that goes to the battery with a fuse that goes to your female coax connector and then you have this control box that allows you to set the heat setting of your heated clothing. Well you will not need this anymore with the Neutrino. You can get rid of this and you just connect your female port directly to the neutrino because the neutrino acts as the fuse and acts as your variable heat setting control through the neutrino cockpit app. Now that I have it installed, you can go into your, your heated jacket circuit and see how you can select your temperature setting by hitting the plus and minus buttons in the cockpit app and that allows you to set your heat or temperature setting on your heated clothing. So you can have your heated jacket your heated pants separate, your heated gloves separate. You can have a you know, separate controllable circuit for all of these so you can vary the heat as you need. So now we'll give an example of what happens when you have a short circuit. Normally with a fuse system, you'll have a fuse blow and you have to go find that fuse and figure out what's going on. Whereas with the Neutrino, you see when you, I'll cause a short circuit here, you get a red indication on the LED on the Neutrino and on the app it tells you circuit one, flashing red, has a fault. And so to simply to reset that circuit, you just remove the short, turn off the circuit, and turn it back on and it's restored to full function. So now that we have all the connections to the bike, we want to, before we zip tie and put everything away, you want to make sure and test that the Neutrino black box is connected properly. And to do that, you want to go with your smartphone and download the cockpit app and open the Neutrino cockpit app Turn on the key and you'll see it shows connected, which means that everything's functioning properly. But to test a circuit, you turn the circuit on and you'll see the associated LED turn on indicating that that circuit has power. So it is amazing that with my phone sitting here not connected to anything, wirelessly I am controlling these circuits without any extra clutter or extra switches on the bike. 
We just wanted to show step by step what a typical installation would be on a motorcycle. So here we have the Neutrino black box as it comes in the package and the tools you'll need to be successful at this install. And I know that electrical systems on motorcycles can be intimidating, but uh, I just want to encourage you that this is a very straightforward, easy product to install. It has only three leads. It has a positive, a negative, and a trigger wire that need to be hooked up to the bike. So once you have those three connections hooked up, the system is ready to go and for you to add any accessory you want to simply and neatly onto your motorcycle. So as we open the box here, you'll see the instructions that you want to make sure and get very familiar with and read through completely, maybe a couple times, just to make sure that you understand what you're what you're going to do on the bike before you get into it. And then you see here the unit with those three wires that I mentioned. And then you have these two other uh, leads coming out. This is your ambient temperature sensor, which you'll run to you know, a, a portion of the bike that is shielded from heat. And then you have the Bluetooth radio, so you can zip tie it, you know, tucked away somewhere, protect it out of the weather on the bike that allows for good reception to your smartphone. So you're gonna wanna locate the Neutrino black box within two feet of the battery. It's the terminal leads that come with it are two feet long. If you absolutely have to locate it farther than that distance, you need to use eight gauge wire and use a proper solder or um, good crimp connection to extend these wires but you want to make sure and use 8 gauge wire and keep it within a reasonable distance. So for my situation on this bike I'm going to put the neutrino right on top of the battery here and then I'll connect up the negative positive and the rear uh, and the yellow trigger wire. Now when securing the neutrino into the bike Oftentimes, we suggest to use some sort of double stick uh, tape or Velcro to keep the unit from rattling around when it's installed. So first, I'll install the yellow trigger wire. On this bike, I'm going to put it to the brake light positive wire, which is in the tail of the bike. So now it's time to connect the trigger wire. One of my favorite connectors to make that happen is a posi tap. So on the posi tap, you have this gray portion that unscrews and has a groove to be slid over an existing wire. And then the pointy probe portion to screw onto the wire. And then you have a secure connection. Now that the trigger wire is attached, we'll move on to connecting the positive and negative leads to the battery. You just want to make sure before you touch, you know, any electrical components on, you know, a motorcycle, you just want to discharge any static electricity by touching a metal portion of the bike. So now that we have all the connections to the bike, we want to, before we zip tie and put everything away, you want to make sure and test that the Neutrino black box is connected properly. And to do that, you want to go with your smartphone and download the cockpit app and open the Neutrino cockpit app, turn on the key, and you'll see it shows connected, which means that everything's functioning properly. But to test a circuit, you turn the circuit on, and you'll see the associated LED turn on, indicating that that circuit has power. So it is amazing that with my phone sitting here, not connected to anything, wirelessly, I am controlling these circuits without any extra clutter or extra switches on the bike. So now when you're ready to add accessories to your bike, you have six leads that are switched on and off or variable. So now we're in the Neutrino cockpit app and you can see you have your labels for six circuits. So we'll go into circuit one here and I can select whether it is switched or like a rheostat. So I, with the switched, it's a direct on and off with the PWM setting, it's variable, similar to what you're used to with heated clothing or dimmable lights. And the Neutrino will remember my setting and always boot up with this setup. And then you also have, the Neutrino is unique in that it includes a ground plane on the unit. So you can actually hook all of your ground leads directly to the Neutrino instead of running separate leads to the battery if you choose. In addition, there also is a provision for a direct uh, battery maintainer connection. So that'll allow you to hook your SAE connection or battery tender connection directly to the Neutrino. So now I want to add an accessory to the bike. Or traditionally, we had the fuse. Well, you don't need that anymore. So you can just get rid of that added 
clutter on your bike. All that's left is to simply connect these two leads to the neutrino positive and negative. Use a, flat, a small flat blade screwdriver and the terminal screws to tighten down onto the wire. Now you can install any other electronic you want and have it connected, fused, and controlled by the neutrino. So an important thing to know is when you make these setting changes on your bike, you want to make on your neutrino app, you want to make sure that the bike is on and you're connected to the neutrino. That way those settings are being saved into the neutrino black box. And the way that's really useful is say you have multiple bikes, you can actually use your same smartphone, same app, everything, walk from this bike to your other bike and the settings that are set inside the bike will show on your phone. So that if you have different accessories on your sport bike than your adventure bike, those settings will show up on your app without any extra user interface. Now that you have your smartphone mounted on your handlebars, you can see that wirelessly you can control all of your devices on your motorcycle and it uses a Bluetooth connection so that you don't need cell phone service to maintain that connection with the neutrino. And it works seamlessly with all of your other apps. Like say you like to use your GPS app, you know, your turn-by-turn -turn directions notifications will still show up on the screen. Or if you have a phone call, you'll see the, or a text message, you'll see those indi indications that you're used to. And we've just finished up the installation on, of the neutrino black box on an R1200 GS.